firearm. Mm -hmm. uh, it will also, in some cases, require the, the batter or the perpetrator, the respondent, to pay child support mm -hmm. and other monetary resources that will help the victim to um, begin to on their journey of safety mm -hmm. and, and free of violence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this order of protection is available 24 hours in Davidson County. There is an ad, there are several advocacy centers available to help victims mm -hmm. here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Since their show is domestic violence in Nashville, yeah, mm -hmm. so we have the Gene Crow Advocacy Center, which is located right at the courthouse, and they have advocates there on staff that will help victims to obtain order of protection and go to court with victims. Um, Mayor, under the leadership of Mayor Barry, we're going to see the building of an Office of Family Safety mm -hmm. Center, mm -hmm. and it's going to be on Marquisville Road, and it's going to be a one-stop shop where victims can go in to get ad advocacy help, counseling help, mm -hmm. and to get get an order of protection and to get a, to get a warrant uh, to obtain a warrant against the person who has hurt them and there are going to be other wraparound services mm -hmm. there um, at the um, office of family safety I do want to also share with your listening audience that they need to talk to someone 24 hours they can call the YWCA mm -hmm. hotline which is 615 242 mm -hmm. One one nine nine one one. Mm -hmm. So those those are and or Morning Star as well six one five eight six zero 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 three. So these local agencies are available um, to provide victims uh, with help twenty four hours a day. And so you think that uh, Nashville is very very progressive in terms of trying to deal with the issue of domestic violence. But now I also understand that there are not enough. Uh, uh, domestic violence shelters uh, in town to accommodate the individuals that might be willing trying to get away from the batterer and, and whatnot. Uh, that's true mm -hmm. and that's when uh, we had to step up as a community and help victims. So um, shelters depend on money from various resources, donations, um, state funding, mm -hmm. and other types of um, uh, individual um, contributions to their agencies um, to, to make shelters available. Mm -hmm. So you can definitely lobby your legislate, legislate, legislator mm -hmm. to give more money to these funds to support mm -hmm. shelters and to increase the beds mm -hmm. uh, for victims of domestic violence. Pastor, close us out here. You know, it's kind of puzzling, you know, because like I say in my situation when you don't know, mm -hmm. you know, you, you don't have an idea and then when you look at it now that, you know, my daughter has no voice in the situation and, and now the perpetrator, he's trying to, you know, blame her. Put all the blame. Yeah, yeah blame. he's trying to blame her. And, of course, there's nothing there present that, you know, to, to support anything that he's saying, you know, but it, to, to try to blame her. It's almost trying to say, well, you're responsible for your own death, when, but then when I'm hearing about the power and control mm -hmm. and the fact that, you know, my daughter has this personality that if she didn't want to talk to you, she wouldn't talk, mm -hmm. you know, and that's with anybody, you know what I'm saying? So, and in that situation, he came in and he tried to make her have a conversation with him where she hadn't been talking to him mm -hmm. for a couple of days that I found out from my wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, he tried to make her talk to him, you know, mm -hmm. this same thing he told me. But, and what I didn't know, I knew that when I picked him up, he had her car keys and, and her cell phone and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But what I didn't know was that she was, until I heard his testimony, his, uh, viewed his video testimony, mm -hmm. that she was actually trying to leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he came out of the house, her house. She was going to leave him in her house as she left mm -hmm. and got in, get in her car and leave. And he came out in the yard and took her keys physically took her keys from her mm -hmm. and and then wouldn't give them back and then had this thing whole thing begin to escalate mm -hmm. you know and then at the end of the day my daughter's deceased <clears throat> and now he's trying to wiggle his way out of it mm -hmm. and you know, I'm thankful that you know the district attorney's office is you know is fighting this thing you know and, and I believe that you know we'll overcome in the mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. you know and then you think about you know it's a lot of young women you know that will move these guys into their so houses mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. like that without uh -huh. really even <clears throat> knowing these mm -hmm. people and who they are and stuff. And, and this guy, he seemed to be a, an okay guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, it turned out, you know, mm -hmm. differently. You know, now my daughter's 24-year-old daughter is deceased, mm -hmm. you know, uh, murdered by somebody that I thought was okay. My wife thought was okay because, like I say, there was never any sign. Right. Uh -huh. And batterers don't tend to wear a sign that say I'm a batterer mm -hmm. on the back. Mm -hmm. The relationship always usually starts off good. Uh, just like, and I go back to the Medea's family reunion mm -hmm. um, example. It always starts off good. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want to believe the best about people.
Mm -hmm. um, and so um, he raises some really good points about how this batter is building up this situation. Mm -hmm. Batterers really act good in public often because when the victim finally reaches out and says, this person is hurting me, they're gonna say, uh, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. He's always at the church, mm -hmm. he's so nice, yeah, he mm -hmm. helps the pastor, and you're gonna tell me that you must be doing something wrong. Oh, uh, so this is the kind of game okay. um, the batterer mm -hmm. plays. And the batterer always, uh, most always does not want to take ownership for their behavior. Mm -hmm. So let me just take a I'm going to talk about batter's intervention programs. Mm -hmm. So if I commit domestic assault, I will go, most likely I'll, I'll be arrested, and I'm supposed to be arrested, mm -hmm. immediately arrested, and I'm supposed to be held for 12 hours, mm -hmm. okay? That's everywhere. That's here in Davidson mm -hmm. County, too. 40 seconds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, but there yeah, are batterers yeah, intervention yeah, classes uh -huh. um, that are assigned and so batterers can learn to hold themselves accountable mm -hmm. for their behaviors mm -hmm. so victims will not be blamed for something the perpetrator did. Very good. And let me thank the two of you for bringing by that excellent information and I know Ms. Kimbrough that uh, <laughs> we were running out of time and, and your enthusiasm for what you're doing <laughs> and I think that's very very good you see yes. and, and I think that this has been a very very uh, helpful uh, show this morning and let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of comments thank you and good morning